The winner of American Idol 2002 is... <laughs> Kelly Clarkson. That is Ryan Seacrest announcing Kelly Clarkson as the very first winner of American Idol 21 years ago this month. Some 23 million people watched that finale of the cultural phenomenon that made stars of both Clarkson and Seacrest. In the two decades since America met him on Idol, Seacrest has held more successful jobs that would seem to fit in the calendar. On his way to becoming a full-fledged media titan in the mold of his professional hero, Dick Clark. And he has used that success to give a boost to kids who need it most. As Seacrest Studios light up children's hospitals across the country, with a new one opening just the other day. Ryan and I got together this week in New York for a Sunday sit down. It's Harry Styles, 102.7 Kiss FM. Good morning. Let's get to it. Ryan Seacrest has been honing that now famous voice since he first hit the airwaves at just 16 years old. What was your rap back then, Ryan? Would I recognize it? Radio as... Ryan reaching the beaches and rocking the docks, everybody. <laughs> Let's go. You're on the air. Call her. It was like I was over the top. I was one of those, you know, guys that thought you had to talk like yeah. this all the time to make everybody, you know, listen and get your attention like that. Well, it is a Ryan's Roses program. Today, the Radio Hall of Famer needs no introduction. You probably know the backstory, but Timberland, Nelly Furtado, and Justin Timberlake, they've all gotten back together. I always wanted to do this. I always wanted to sit near one of these. I always wanted to be on the air. And I think the fact that I get to do it, I'm grateful, but I'm always afraid it might not be there. Three, two, one. And we're on. Just this week, Ryan found himself in another studio, the brand new Seacrest Studios inside New York's Cohen Children's Medical Center, where kids get the opportunity to step into Seacrest's shoes. It is the 13th Seacrest studio across the country, with another to open in Salt Lake City later this year. I'll be your debut host in the Seacrest studio. I wanted to do something that made an impact, but also was tangible. So I came up with the idea to develop these state-of-the-art media centers, content centers, broadcast studios that become the heartbeat of these hospitals. And the idea is to create that energy and destination for patients and families to totally escape if they can just for a few minutes and what they're going through. It has to be so gratifying to say, all right, I'm here. What do I what do I do? What do yeah. I give back? You know, the, the kids that are in these children's hospitals miss birthdays, kids miss proms, and we want to create a place where they can continue to celebrate that, make friends and connect, and that's what these studios do. Broadcasting is how Seacrest has connected since he was a kid, growing up just outside of Atlanta. I think you were mowing lawns to That's raise it. money at Radio Shack. I mean, it was very strange to even my parents, I think, at the time, and my friends who also mowed lawns, but they would spend their money at the arcade at the mall. I wanted to go to the mall in Radio Shack and buy a mixer, a tiny one of these things. <laughs> at 10. At 10. And I wanted, I was pretending to be Casey Kasem, counting them down from coast to coast. In Atlanta, where I grew up, the biggest stars were the DJs. And so I was uh, just fascinated by that world. I remember being so excited to audition to be the guy that does the morning announcements and the Pledge of Allegiance at school. And I thought, gosh, is there a way to do this for a living? The story goes, you get a radio show at 16 years old mm -hmm. on an actual FM radio station in Atlanta. I was an unofficial intern, and then I learned to run the board. A couple years later, there was a night where uh, the tape that I was supposed to run of the DJ broke, and I signed on the air and said the call letters, and uh, that was it. And I looked up to Casey and Rick Dees and Larry King and Regis. And the wild thing is, almost everyone you just listed, you filled their shoes in a I job. I can't even believe it. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. <laughs> I have no formal training. Seacrest went to the University of Georgia, but he was a young man in a hurry. And at 19, he left for Hollywood. He booked several hosting gigs there before landing the one that would change his life. Take a look at this. On a new show called American Idol. 
I love the story that you go into audition for Idol as a judge. Yeah, they're talking and, to me about being a judge. But then it was, how do you feel about hosting live TV? And you confidently said, oh, of course. I got it. I figured I'll, I'll learn by doing. Yeah. It was unscripted. It was Thank loose. You. We weren't quite sure what was going to happen every night. The imperfections were the beauty of it. Seacrest, out. Good night. Are you aware that Seacrest out is still a thing people say? Yeah, because now they go, Seacrest in. Oh. If I come into a restaurant, Seacrest in. <laughs> Where'd that come from? One of the nights, there was some more things for me to say, but I couldn't get it in in time before the show was going to end. Five, four, three, two, one. It just went, Seacrest out. <laughs> before we got cut off by the local news. And I think it's stuck. Nice to see you. Seacrest has been everywhere ever since. On red carpets, on morning television, in Times Square on New Year's Eve, and even behind the scenes as executive producer of the Kardashians reality franchise. Next, he's taking his turn at the wheel, replacing Pat Sajak as host of Wheel of Fortune. Pat Sajak is an icon in this business, and he's made it so comfortable for everybody to watch it. I'm like a kid so excited about just being, seeing the set. So do you have any th plans yet? I know it's still a year or so yeah. away, but the, what your version of the show will be? My version will be the version that that is. <laughs> the game works. All you want to do is walk in and say, good evening, grab your devices, and here's the first puzzle. <laughs> How important is it to you that Vanna be back for your version of the show? I think it's extremely important. I am a huge Vanna White fan. Um, when I signed on, I called her and said, I very much look forward to being on that set with you. Just as our interview was ending, Seacrest got word yes, that Vanna had agreed to return to Wheel for his inaugural season next year. This is such great news. I've been very excited to work with her. But now that it's official, I can say, congratulations, Vanna. I can't wait. And also probably nice for the new guy to have somebody who's been there a well, while. Yeah, who, who I can say, how does this work? <laughs> exactly. Where, where do we go now? <laughs> What's next? OK, got it. And just a little look to her probably centers you a little bit, yeah, right? Well, she, she, she can definitely, Vanna, please tell me what to do. Wow. Seacrest turns 50 next year with no plans of slowing down. Your morning hack this morning before seven o'clock, he's too busy living his teenage uh, dream. Game, right? It's everything I always wanted. The pace actually fuels my energy. If I were to do one thing once a week, I'd be terrible. He is a busy man and a great guy. Our thanks to iHeartRadio Studios in New York, Ryan's home away from home, for hosting our conversation. Ryan is about to hit the road for American Idol, which starts auditions for its 22nd season this fall. And you can catch him hosting the 42nd season of Wheel of Fortune, yes, with Vanna at his side, this time next year. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full interview with Ryan Seacrest. You can find that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.